going outside, okay? Okay, then. I'm going outside. I'm going outside. What's up, Zeus? I'm outside. All right, guys, welcome to the VentureTube channel. Thank you for joining in. This video is gonna be about my new 2018 Hobie Pro Angler 14. Just gonna briefly talk about what changes have been made to that kayak, the reasons why I got it. And also, I'm gonna touch on some things probably most of you haven't thought about, and it's things that I've come to realize over the years of owning Hobies. So I'm gonna give you a few tips on that, and uh, let's dive right in. Come on. Okay, so here's my setup. Most of you guys know I changed my trailer. This is a motorcycle trailer that I converted into my kayak trailer, but yet I'm still able to carry a motorcycle if I need to. And got me a nice, good size toolbox here where I can store all my kayak stuff, pedals, wheels, hog troughs, etc. And I also carry an extra kayak up here when I have a buddy going fishing with me, so it works out really good you guys know i used to have the harbor freight trailer that was a great trailer for the money lasted me a long time but needed needed a little bit more space so anyway if you're wanting to know more information about the hobie pa line in general i have another video up that i did a complete tournament setup review of my 2016 I'll put a link right here and it'll also be in the description so check that out it's a really in-depth video it touches on a lot of things that would be helpful to you guys So first things first, why did I get a 2018 Hobie PA? Well, my 2016, that's what I had before, it cracked underneath the seat. They cracked right here on these mounts, and I had a crack running on both sides of this mount on both sides of the kayak. Now, I do the majority of my fishing standing up, and I'm a bigger guy, so I guess the up and down movement eventually is what cracked it. Now, I know, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I know a couple times I had fell in my chair standing up and fishing, and a weight come by, and you know, have to sit down really quick. And yeah, I probably slammed down in the seat, but it uh, happened only a handful of times. But as much as I fish, uh, that, that spot just got weak and I always fish in the high seat position. Come to find out when you look in the hole of the Hobie, there's no support under there whatsoever. There's no foam blocks. And that's how they, that's how they support the floor. The parts that'll have the most stress on them, these areas right here, they are supported with foam blocks on both sides. And all the areas where the kayak obviously needed support, except for right here. The only reason I could think that Hobie didn't put anything under this section is because it's just not a flat section. As you can see, it's, it's got all these angles, so it's kind of hard to get a block up underneath there. I uh, actually cut some custom blocks and put them up underneath this section. Still couldn't get it directly under here, but I did cut a channel and a block that fits underneath here. And unfortunately, this little part right here rides with the, uh, the contour of the, ho the hole where the scuppers run. There's an indentation on the bottom, so you don't have a flat surface on the bottom on the inside of the kayak either. So you have this on top and you have an indentation on the bottom. So I had to cut the foam block on both top and bottom to get it to stay in that position. Long story short, I'm hoping that remedies that section from cracking. They have changed the bungee cable color. It's gray, it used to be black. I'm assuming gray is much, much stronger than black. That's a joke, haha. -ha. If you open up the hatch here, they've added this gasket, which is a really nice addition. Now, I don't know if they added this in 2017 or 2018, but either way, it's, a, it's an addition from the 2016 model. That's really gonna help to seal on your, your hatch bucket that this gasket rides right along this edge. What that's gonna do if you get in choppy water, sometimes water would splash in between here and it could work its way into the bucket or even into your hole. That's gonna remedy that. So you got this nice tight seal. You actually have to push it down. You can see how it's kind of spongy. You have to push it down to get it to seal so you know it's a tight seal. And I would imagine too, if you decide to use your front bucket for a cooler, that would provide just a little bit better insulation. Not really sure if it'd make a big difference, but I don't know. They changed up this little platform here, which is pretty cool. It used to just be a flat black piece of uh, plastic there that you could do whatever you wanted with. And now they've added a track, an integrated track right here where you can mount lights or, you know, cameras for me, that's gonna be really convenient. If you fish the salt or 
you need to cut bait, you can put your knife right here, pliers, whatever. I like that little addition, little, little things like that I really have come to appreciate with Hobie. So since my boat was a warranty boat, I had to, I just received the 2018 hull. So this is my old seat from my other kayak. This is the old handles and uh, you know, old crate. It doesn't come with the crate, but anyway, you get the picture. This handle on the 2018, they come with handle risers. So that handle will ride about two and a half, three inches higher on both sides. So that's something new. Am I missing anything? Now they did change the logo. You can see there the Hobie logo is much larger. I think in 2017, it only had that size logo on the camo versions. And I was like, why don't they change that logo on all the kayaks? In 2018, they did. I guess they were listening. And you got the Mirage Pro Angler 14. So all in all, not many changes. So Hobie was smart and they changed up two important things. To adjust these pedals, you have to squeeze this guy right here, which isn't nothing inconvenient. It works great. The problem is it could have been made a lot simpler and they knew that and they changed it for 2018. Now on the 2018s, you have a push button that you just simply grab, use your thumb, push it, and you can push and pull to adjust it in any position you want to accommodate for different leg lengths. That's something minor in my opinion. My fishing line would get caught on this, sometimes my shoestrings or whatever if I was wearing tennis shoes. The most problematic thing with this design was my fishing line getting caught on it because quite honestly, once I have it in a certain position, I never change and nobody else fishes out of my kayak, so there's really no need to change my Mirage Drive. But I will say, these fins, when you hit a stump and they bend and you, you need to make a correction, you can hardly do it on the water with this right here because you got one, two nuts right here. And you don't want to be fooling with nuts on the water. What Hobie has done now is they've went back to the old V2 drive design and there's just a pin that runs uh, perpendicular to this shaft and it's got a little split ring on one side. So you take that split ring off, pin slides out, fin slides down. That's the design that allows you to make a repair on the water, essentially with just a pair of needle nose pliers, which you're gonna have because you're gonna be ripping them hooks out of them big bass's faces. Now, I wanna to touch on something that I've noticed throughout the years. I said I was gonna talk about it. New kayak trailer. I have it sitting on three inch conduit. You know, general run of the mill conduit. Every kayak, every Hobie, every whatever kayak you see on a trailer usually has this kind of setup. Over time, this thing has bent, which I've wanted it to bend because it takes the shape of the hole, which is a good thing. If it takes the shape of the hole, it adds more support, right? Things I've noticed with this boat, with a brand new boat. When I'm pedaling this boat, it is so much faster than my 2016. And I'm using the same Mirage Drive. Here's my thoughts on why. Number one, it is a scratchless, dent-free hull. I mean, this thing is smooth. I've noticed even when I stop pedaling, I glide much further. So those things do matter. They really do. I never would have thought about that. But having scratches, having indentations on the hull of your kayak, actually slows it down, especially in a drift, which I guess could be advantageous in some ways, but when you're trekking across the water and you want that speed, you want it smooth. Now, storage of your kayak is a big factor on how fast your kayak is gonna be too, and here's why. I always strap my kayak to my trailer, one bungee over the front here, one bungee over the back. And you can see this one's really not even that tight. And when I put my front one on, I don't put it on that tight. Reason being is because when you put it on tight, plus you keep your gear or whatever on your kayak, it's a lot of weight. Plus you got the bungees on both ends, pulling the kayak down. Now, I'm not saying that makes the kayak do this right here, but what it does is it flattens the bottom of the kayak. And what that does, it actually makes for a more stable Hobie Pro Angler, but it makes it much slower. And when I say much slower, I'm, I'm talking maybe 0.2 miles per hour, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're only, you know, you're averaging three and a half miles per hour, any little bit makes a big difference. So I've made a promise to myself not to strap this Hobie down tight, even though I'm always worried, oh man, it's gonna fall off the trailer, but I've actually had straps break and I drove 30 miles with the kayak not being strapped at all and it stayed on the trailer just fine. But I'm not going to strap it down hard. I want my kayak fast. And right now, when I stand up and fish, this kayak is less stable than my 2016, but it's 
faster. Less stable, faster. Old kayak, more stable, not as fast. And it has to do with scratches on the hull and how you store it. it. Makes sense to me. Something I thought about, wanted to tell you guys who are, you know, you may keep your kayak on a trailer. If you're tightening it down real tight, loosen it up, let it sit in your garage. If you know you're not fishing for a week, take those straps off and let the kayak breathe. All right, guys, well, that's gonna wrap up this video. I believe I covered everything. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you guys have bought Hobies because of my channel, leave that in the comment section below. It's gonna be an awesome tournament season next year, getting prepared for the cat season and the DFW series, and I qualified for the national championship next year for $100,000 the biggest kayaking tournament in kayaking history. So pretty pumped about that. You guys, stay tuned to the channel. I'll be doing some real reviews, lure reviews. I still build trolling motors for the Hobie kayaks. You guys are still asking me, I've sold a ton. You guys, uh, thank you so much for your support and for, for your business. You can check them out on my website at www.venturetube.net. I also have t-shirts, buffs, and other things if you wanna show some love on the channel. And you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to go try to get this kayak wet and see what I can do with these green ladies. God bless, guys. See you all in the next episode. Come on.